Greetings brothers, today I want to talk specifically about the Death Company, especially after they just got this two points per model for both the Marines and the Intercessors drop with Chapter Approved 2022. I'm going to compare them up against Sanguary Guard, Vanguard Veterans, and we're also going to run a couple of different loadouts just to see how good Death Company are now. Should you include them in your army, and if you do, what sort of units you should run potentially. So let's get straight into the Death Company, and we'll start with the Marines. They're now power level 7 or 14, nothing has changed there, but they are down to 20 points per model. Jump packs for 3, so a 10-man squad with jump packs, bolt pistols and chainsaws, now in at 230 points. That's a reduction of 20 points, so it's significant. Thunder Hammers at 15, Power Fists at 10, and Infernal Pistols at 5, and obviously every model can be equipped however you like, that's why... These are kind of our superior option, they're just more flexible than the Intercessors. Let's look at the Intercessors then, they're down at 22 points per model now. Basically they get the exact same stat line but they have one extra attack. They're either with auto bolt rifles but I would heavily recommend if you are going to run them it would be the heavy bolt pistols and chainsaws because with a chainsaw they can get like 6 or 7 attacks on the charge which is significant if you have a decent number of them. A 5 man squad is coming in at 110 points so if you just run them all with chainsaws and before Savage Echoes is up, that's 30 attacks. With Savage Echoes up, that's 35 attacks. It's a significant number of chainsaw attacks for the points of the models. If you think about like a squad of assault intercessors at 95 points, then for 15 points here, essentially you're getting 10 more attacks. So that is very, very significant. Now, Thunder Hammers cost 20 and Power Fists cost 10, but you can only upgrade one model. And I think this is another big weakness of the Primaris that we constantly see is that Primaris models lack weapon options. Now I don't know if it's just that GW don't want to put them on the sprues or they're trying to balance stuff but I don't think the balance is working because I don't think Space Marines are particularly strong right now. I think it would be better if they just sold upgrade sprues. Upgrade sprues with thunder hammers, upgrade sprues with storm shields, lightning claws, you know, all these things that people end up buying full boxes to get which should really just be available in upgrade sprues. I mean they do it for jump packs but let me not digress too much. Let's get into the stats and stuff about the Death Company. Death Company against Sanguary Guard and Vanguard Vets, which are kind of the most picked choices. Now, this is the number of hits that would need to kill the model. So if you look at the 9.6 on the Death Company, that would basically mean that they would need to wound on 4s because it's strength 4 here. So that would leave 4.8. The Death Company then save on a 4+, plus, that leaves 2.4. The Death Company model then gets the 6-up shrug, so that essentially means 9.6 shots will kill a Death Company model. You can see here Sanguary Guard and Vanguard Veteran slightly more survivable, and as we look through all the comparisons here, for the most part, both the Sanguary Guard and the Vanguard Vets are always going to be more survivable than Death Company. This is probably why they are seen as the more prestigious or the more picked units because of survivability. However, the number of put in in green is if you're willing to pay the command points for refusal to die. Uh, refusal to die is 1 CP for a 5 man or less and 2 CP for the 10 man and if you pay the 2 CP or the 1 CP whatever size your squad is it's actually surprising in most cases it just instantly lifts the death company from where they are to match the storm shield vanguard vets and the sanguary guard and in some cases it actually puts them ahead of them. The only other thing that's not factored in here is obviously Sangry Guard or minus one to hit in melee, but I actually don't think that makes a huge difference. Quite often Sangry Guard get targeted by characters or units with rerolls, so minus one to hit doesn't tend to save them that much. I'd much rather that Sangry Guard had a different power, but I don't think the minus one to hit is particularly strong in the current meta where lots and lots of things can have full rerolls. So yeah, it's just worth noting, Death Company Marines with Refusal to Die are actually looking like they're pretty legitimately good. Now, let me look at the points cost for the Sangre Guard and the Vanguard Veterans. And Sangre Guard went up last chapter approved to 32 points per models, as did Vanguard Veterans. I think they ended up putting up the Storm Shield one point per model. So Sangre Guard are 32, Vanguard Veterans are 27. So basically, if you look at Sangre Guard versus Death Company Marine with Jump Pack, he costs 40% more points against the Death Company Intercept Processor is 45. The Vanguard Veterans against the Death Company with the Jump Pack is 17 more, and then against the Intercessors at 22 more. So how does that actually play out? Well, Vanguard Veterans typically have between 11 to 39% more survivability based on the numbers. So that seems valid enough. You know, they cost about 20% more, they have a good range of more survivability. The Sangre Guard are costing 40 or 45% more, but their survivability is only between 4 and 25% more survivable. I've said for a while now, I feel like Sangre Guard are in like essentially paper armour. If they get picked off or if they get targeted, they do not survive. 
And I think this shows that if the enemy can shoot your Sangre Guard, they're actually a very inefficient model to be dying because their cost is so damn high. Now, you know, paying one CP for the refusal to die or two based on the size of your squad actually now eclipse the Sangre Guard in terms of survivability and, and, and the Vanguard Vets too. Really surprising me. Um, but I guess this is what happens when you change the points a little bit. So refusal to die could actually be massively important. One thing that I do dislike is that there is no way to ever improve Vanguard Veterans or Sangre Guard survivability. So having that ace up your sleeve of refusal to die for the Death Company may actually be not bad. And then the last thing to say as well, Death Company also essentially have an inherent protection against mortal wounds as well, right? Because their feel no pain will work against mortals. So if you're up against psychic armies or Catan or something that's shitting out mortal wounds, then the Death Company are maybe even a little bit better there as well. Now, if you're getting some value out of today's video, I'd love it if you could hit the like button so this video can spread to a few more people. So what I thought I would do next is I would build a squad of each of these models. And I decided to start with my squad of seven Sangre Guard. I have a squad that include pretty much every army list and it's a split of axes, it's four axes, three swords and one guy has an infernal pistol. That's 229 points so can we do something similar with the other three units? Yeah of course we can. Death Company with Intercessors, we can take 9 models, 8 with a heavy bolt pistol and chainsword and 1 with a thunder hammer, that's going to be 218. Death Company with jump packs, 8 models, 5 with bolt and chainswords and 3 thunder hammers, that's the exact same as the Sangre Guard, 229. And then the Vanguard Veterans with Jump Pack Storm Shields, two Thunder Hammers, five sets of Lightning Claws. Uh, well, it would be a Lightning Claw and Storm Shield, sorry, not sets. That's 228. So we've got four squads. They're all very similar. We already know point for point in terms of each model within the squad how survivable they are. So let's see how they do for damage, right? So I basically took the Sangre Guard and threw them against everything you can see on the left, like infantry, Chaos Cultists, Marines, characters, sort of heavier infantry with Toughness 5, I guess that would be like Gravis models, uh, Drukhari Raiders, Monsters, Armors, and Knights. And obviously I did the same comparison with your Lightning Claw and Thunder Hammer Vanguard Veterans, and I put the numbers down the side here, and then I did the exact same two slides again with the Death Company Intercessors and the Death Company Marines. It's sad how quickly I go over these slides, because this literally took me three hours last night. But anyway, we get to a comparison slide, and what it shows is against these targets, essentially two damage weapons are good against, because I've said for a little while as well, in the current meta, which we're going to talk about in a bit, Sangre Guard are kind of starting to fall off a little bit, and I'm going to give you reasons why. I'd almost ignore this top line, because there's a lot of multiple wound damage weapons in here, because obviously I haven't filtered out like Thunder Hammers or Wasting damage against one wound infantry and um yeah but everything except sangry guard has thunder hammers and sangry guard have um two damage weapons so again sort of ignore the top line but if we look at all these other things then i've put a little green star next to the ones that are best so sangry guard do best at get killing marines killing characters killing like those higher toughness infantry death company with the thunder hammers do best against Dukari raiders um and also against monsters Armor, and I guess it comes back to the fact that the Sangre Guard don't take minus one to hit, like the Thunder Hammers hit, and the Sangre Guard are good against knights and basically enemy armor. That would be good against stuff that's basically toughness eight with a three up save. So, looking at this right now, I'm thinking Sangre Guard, they're doing not bad. Death Company Marines looking really, really decent now uh, for the points cost essentially. And Vanguard Veterans are kind of middle of the road, right? They don't do the greatest damage, but we did know that if you don't spend any CP, they are kind of the most survivable, excluding like those mortal wounds. So Vanguard Veterans, I think they still have a place. I still actually really like Vanguard Veterans, and I think it is just because the invulnerable saves can help a lot in certain situations. Something the Sangre Guard lack as well is any sort of invun save. And I really hate trying to make saves with Sangre Guard on like fives and sixes when they obviously um, are 32 points per model. It kind of can become horrific very, very quickly in terms of how many points you lose. So what about minus one damage enemies? We know minus one damage enemies are tearing up. There's so much in the current meta. So let <laughs> spend ages again getting slides together for... All these minus one damage enemies that we might see. Plague Marines, Plague Burst Crawlers, Mortarians, Leviathan Dreads, Contemptors, Telemons, and then also include a couple of Orc Vehicles there. And in the case of when you are actually hitting these Orc Vehicles with Strength 8, they're not Ramshackle. 
Um, they're only ramshackle against stuff that's less than strength 8, but that does badly affect the Sangre Guard, because they obviously 5 on their swords and 6 on your axes. So I did the same two things again with the Death Company, and then we slam them all together into a final slide. And ignore this green column for a minute, we're coming back to that, because that's a special column. So how do we do against minus 1 damage enemies? Well, the Death Company Marines, with that squad of 3 Thunder Hammers and 5 Chain Swords, are top for Plague Marines. Plague Burst Crawlers. Mortarion is actually taken down by the nine Death Company. Intercessors, I guess, just sheer weight of chainsword attacks is good against Mortarion. Leviathan Dread, Death Company Marines are ahead. Contemptor Dreadnoughts. The Death Company Marines will kill the Contemptor in a single round of combat here, which is pretty nice. Telemon Heavy Dreadnoughts are horrifically survivable, and apparently a 230 point Death Company squad will do not even five wounds to it, but it is the best we've got. So, I mean, enjoy that, I guess, if you can. And then against the Rucker Trucks, the Scrap Jets, the Death Copters, Death Company are just miles ahead. Again, their Thunder Hammers aren't going to suffer from the Ramshackle, and minus one damage isn't going to affect Chain Swords in any way. What I guess is interesting is, look at the Vanguard Veterans. They are quite a bit ahead of the Sangre Guard here. So if we talk about Vanguard Veterans being quite, probably the most survivable of the three in general, again, I did, I'm not including the minus one to hit in Sangre Guard in melee combat here, but that's really hard to filter that in. Now, the Vanguard Veterans do really well. Uh, they're not far behind the Death Company in like all these columns. And I mean, that's the same points cost. So yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the reasons that for me anyway, I've started playing a little bit more Vanguard Veterans and a little less Sangre Guard, and it's just the meta that we currently have and it has been developing for a while. And again, I'm going to talk about that in a couple of slides time. Want to give a special shout out now, however, to Steel Rain, one of our community members that has been nagging me, and he definitely has been nagging, nag, 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 a joke. He's been <laughs> politely reminding me that Death Company Marines with Infernal Pistols are an interesting option. So I wanted to throw this down there, and I think he said he was running 10 Marines with 6 Infernal Pistols, but because of this comparison, I was trying to build a squad around 229 points. I think that is a good number of points to think about for a large melee squad. In some ways, that probably make them to the last units as well, if you want to run to the last, if you feel confident doing that. 8 Death Company with 8 Infernal Pistols and 8 Chain Swords. Surprisingly, I've put a White Star here, because they're kind of not part of my comparison, but... Against Plague Marines, Plague Burst Crawlers, Mortarian, Leviathan Dreads, and Contemptor Dreadnoughts, they are actually your best option, right? The only reason they fall down against Telemons is because the Thunder Hammers are going to get the plus one to hit from the charge, whereas the Infernal Pistols are obviously going to be the same strength as the Telemon because they are strength eight. And, I mean, they do not bad against the Rucker Trucks and Death Copters as well. So, the one thing that's interesting, though, is I've never... I've not added the bonus two additional damage if you get those Infernal Pistols in half range. I mean, that is going to be quite tough to do, but, you know, a Death Company squad with Infernal Pistols, if you can give them some sort of re-rolls and a pre-game move, and you can maybe even half-range some enemies, these guys could be pretty devastating. So even maybe five with Infernal Pistols could be quite devastating and quite cheap now, right? Because Death Company, basically just 23 points per model. So five of them with Infernal Pistols, that would be 25 on top of the 115. You're talking 140 points. So we actually kind of had to spend 140 points before to get one Thunder Hammer. So now you can keep all your chainsword attacks, but five infernal pistols. If you can half range the enemy, you do some serious damage with um, Death Company with infernal pistols. So unfortunately, I don't own enough models with infernal pistols. I'm going to be painting Death Company soon. I feel like after doing this video, but this is all very interesting. So Death Company coming down two points, both the intercessors and the Marines. I actually think this is a really positive change for us. It gives us another sort of option that we can bring to the table, but I think it also highlights just how bad of a place Sangre Guard are in the meta. Um, I advocately didn't like the idea of them going up last year from 30 to 32 points, but where the meta has gone, and with the amount of minus one damage stuff, and high toughness stuff as well, I really think they're not in a good spot right now. Um, I mean, you still see them. They still have good synergies with like the plus one to hit near the Warlord, but yeah, they're nowhere near as strong as they were like a year and a half ago when 9th edition launched. 
So, what are my thoughts on this? Uh, and my my main thoughts, like I've said, is I thought Sangry Guard were overcosted. I really did. Uh, I thought they were expensive at thirty. At thirty-two, they're playable. They're usable. You'll win games with them. But if you lose them, and you will lose them very easily because they're you know they're not that survivable. Uh, it can be a tough pill to swallow. Like I said, there's so many things that are high toughness. Enemies with solid four up and saves, five up and saves, and minus one or even half damage. Half damage is actually kind of bad against Thunder Hammers because anything that halves damage always ends up rounding up. So Sangry Guard, where they would lose 50% of their damage, Thunder Hammers only lose 33% because it would round it down to one and a half, then it gets rounded back up to two, so you actually only lose one damage. So Sangry Guard do get that good boost if they're near your Warlord, but other things can do that, such as a Sangry Ancient or Quake Bolts, and I've been using Quake Bolts for a while, and it synergizes with every unit that's in combat, not just, you know, Sangry Guard, it can help your Blade Guard, it can help out Dreadnoughts, I mean, it's a really powerful relic, and I, I like Quake Bolts, it's one of my favourite ones. So if we think again about the four squads we made and we attacking those standard targets, the Sangry Guard are still very solid, the Vanguard Veterans, I think, kind of look okay, kind of balanced against their survivability, but the Death Company in both squads seem pretty appealing. I mean, the one downfall of the Death Company, I guess, is the leadership, but there is ways to counter that. You know, some of you guys love to run Dante, he will help them with their leadership problems. Um, a Chaplain or Astrath as well will really help them with their leadership problems too. But it does seem that in the current game, the Sangry Guard are really no longer our most damaging unit point for point. The Death Company, in certain configurations, and three Thunder Hammers and five Chainswords uh, now outperforms them. I suppose the one thing to add there, though, is if you are going to end up running an eight-man Death Company, it's in an awkward state. You almost want to have that ten-man so that then you essentially get the maximum value when you use the 2 CP for a Fallen Fury or 2 CP for a Refusal to Die. So 8 man for Death Company isn't exactly optimal in terms of like your stratagem costs, but it's actually still a very competitive squad based on the numbers here. And an 8 man Death Company was actually one extra model in the Sangry Guard, right? Because we, we compared the Sangry Guard because the 8 Death Company costs the same as the 7 Sangry Guard, so if you do ever actually pay those points to get Refusal to Die, then you essentially are more survivable than the Sangry Guard, and you've got an extra body in there, which I guess is an extra 2 wounds, so it kind of leaves me wondering why Sangry Guard went up 32 points. I guess the only reason I think is because back at the very beginning of the edition, people would run like three squads of nine Sangre Guard, and that could be very, very difficult for enemies to deal with. But I think there's enough variance in the meta now where like that isn't as much as a problem as maybe it was before. And then another thing to say is the Death Company obviously get the ability to do their Forlorn Fury, and if you really want to do an Alpha Strike, then the Death Company are your model to do that. Death Company can never perform actions and they can never fall back, but these are minor conveniences, I think, since the changes to the secondaries, where, like, typically if you were going to fall back a jump unit, you would only have a few models left, you'd be trying to retreat in a board quadrant for engaging all fronts or to do rod, so that really can't happen, so it's even more minor now than it was before that they can't fall back, and you can also just wings of fire them out of there, you know, like if Death Company get bogged down, you've got a few models left, you want to use them somewhere else, wings of fire for one CP is always a good thing that you can do as a Blood Angel, and it doesn't affect you in terms of like if you take an oath of moment you don't lose the points for falling back because you've essentially just played a, a strat for a redeploy so having gone through all this comparison my army was running seven sangry guard eight vanguard veterans and five close combat terminators i still like all three of those squads but there may be some space for me to start playing a bit of death company and i think for you guys that maybe don't have those same squads or those same attachments or the, the same composition of your force then i think death company at minus two points per model and dare i say even the death company intercessors are actually really attractive i think the, the big problem with the death company intercessors is getting them where they need to be so i think you'd almost have to be planning to strategic reserve them because forlorn fury is not going to help them so strategic reserve them but it would give you an absolute boatload of chain sword attacks and i think the numbers don't lie like they say they're actually pretty useful 
So let me know in the comments below if anything I've said today really hit home and made you change your mind on Death Company, or if you were running them and now planning on doing something else, let me know as well. I do have a pretty awesome painting contest going on in the channel right now, as we have hit 9,000 subscribers, and I am giving away Horus Heresy models this way up. Um, so you can win these, and I'm going to put a link up above to the video that you have to watch. It's like six minutes, and it'll explain exactly how you can get a chance of winning these. You don't necessarily have to have the best painted model out of everybody, because there is going to be a degree of randomness in the selection. So it's worth entering, it's worth trying. If you want to see more Blood Angels content every week on YouTube, then please consider subscribing. And if you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, remember there is always links in the channel description, such as Patreon or the big channel join button here and become a member on YouTube. That's always super appreciated. Appreciated. I hope I'll catch you all in the next video. By the blood are we made strong brothers. Peace.